This is Amelia. I'm calling for Mark. Yeah, this is he. Can you make a video of Paramount modification? Oh, good idea. I'll make a little video on that. All right, thanks a lot. We'll see you later. All right, whether you are uh, new to paramotoring or have been in it for a while and you're just looking for some new ideas, uh, these things should help out anybody. So one thing I learned early on is that you just want to keep your paramotor clean. Basically, like anything in general, keep it clean. Uh, and the easiest thing is to pick up a can of WD-40, nice rag like this. I always use a nice fresh rag. And just spray the rag is what I like to do. Give it a little spray. And any oil or any stuff that comes off the paramotor, it's a two-stroke, you get a little oil. If you run it a little bit rich, you'll get some oil. And just keep everything wiped down all the time. Make it nice and clean. Get any dust off there. That way, if there is a leak or if there is anything that, you know, broken or happened to your motor, uh, you'll be able to see that, spot it right away. So that is probably one of the most general and basic things. Is just keep your motor clean. All right, next tip is to always keep an eye on your spark plug color. Um, keeping an eye on your spark plug is going to give you an idea whether your motor is running in a rich or a lean state. And it's super easy to do. Just take your tool kit. And pull your plug out. I'm using a BR9ES on the Blackhawk 125. And keep an eye on this here. You want your spark plug to be a nice, rich, coffee brown color here. When your spark plug is that color, uh, it means that you have a good mixture, good air to fuel mixture, and you're not gonna be running too rich or too lean. Too rich meaning too much fuel to air, and too lean meaning too much air versus fuel. Uh, once you see that this is good, you keep an eye on it. Put this back in, but it's a good thing to check. I like to check mine you know, every few flights and just keep, a, keep an idea on it. Definitely if it's getting too white, I found out that that's a bad thing, and it's running too lean. Uh, just like any two-stroke. So that's another important tip. Keep that clean. Next up, you can see right here, we have this little collar. We'll go into this. This little collar is our head temperature gauge, our cylinder head temperature gauge. So this gets put between the spark plug and the head. This is going to give you the reading of the cylinder head temperature. And this is good for any small engine or any paramotor. You want to know what you're running. Uh, this goes right over to my throttle control and I can look at it during flight at any time to make sure that I'm running the proper temperature. Also, you want to make sure that uh, you adequately tighten down your spark plug head right here. So make sure once you put it on there, don't go too easy. You don't want to strip it out, but give it a good, good snugging down and put your boot back on. Make sure that that's on there nice and straight. Tap that down nice and secure. Next up are two super important things that I really like. I put it on right from the get-go. Uh, we have our cylinder head temperature gauge. This gives you your cylinder head temp. Current temperature right now, 78 degrees. Uh, hasn't been running at all. Max temperature from my previous flight is 364 degrees. Every new flight you go on, it's going to reset. So I can see that 364 was my last. Seems like a good temperature. Keep it below 390, 400 degrees. Uh, she's running nice and cool. And then this is my hour gauge also. Good to have if you're just keeping an eye on when to do routine maintenance, if you're ever gonna sell the thing to know how many hours on it. And it really easily hooks right into here and um, takes a reading for you. Never have to worry about it and keeps track of it. So that's my next thing, really nice to have. Also next up is to put a uh, carabiner. I like to put mine right onto my throttle end here. And that way I can just connect it after flight uh, right onto here. This moves right into the next one um, on the cord I put this little extension on here it went from about three inches and I made it about six inches long as you can see it comes over your shoulder so if you have to restart in flight or when you want to after shutting off pretty easy to grab onto this and give it a nice pull next up is this piece right here I cut this away just to protect this uh, cage netting rope here and that's all I did was slice a piece of uh, fuel tube put it on top of here that way this rope does not interfere just by moving this pulley up a little higher, it doesn't run into it anyway, but it uh, just keeps it safer and uh, gets it out of the way, makes it not wear away. All right, also, you 
you can see here, I got a reserve mounted. I'll put the link to this video here and you can check it out. Now I didn't fly with a reserve for my first about 50 flights. I knew that I should have one. It's a good insurance policy. Uh, so that's just a nice thing to have. Doesn't add a lot of weight. And when I'm in flight, I practice this all the time, just sitting there. What would I do if I had to deploy it? Just so it's good practice and it's fresh in your mind. In the case that it ever happens, I'm guessing that your, your mind's going to be going pretty quick if you have to deploy it. So get up there, be comfortable with it in flight, know how to use it. And uh, once again, the install video is right here to, to run the bridles and how everything needs to go to keep you as safe as possible. Now, another mod that I have going on here, it's something that I really like. I got this camouflage military surplus pouch from EAA last year for like five bucks. Super heavy duty, uh, cool digital camo pattern. Uh, a lot of times I like to bring stuff up, whether it's my uh, um, radio that I wanted to put in here, or sometimes the kids will come to the park with me and I'll drop down some tennis balls to them. Whatever it might be, it's nice just to have that extra pocket. This one's mounted right here, so super easy access. Anything that you want to bring with you, your phone even, you can slip right into here. Uh, so I really dig having the extra storage set up. Another upgrade that we have going on here, uh, you know, sometimes you just want to customize your paramotor. So I found a little sticker here. It doesn't really signify anything. It just looks kind of cool. Uh, but try to set the paramotor apart a little bit. I didn't want to paste stickers all over it. I uh, just wanted it to look a little bit cooler. So added a little sticker modification on right there. All right, next up we got a couple things. One, first off, is this uh, quick disconnect for your fuel tank. Makes it super easy. Uh, to disconnect your fuel tank from the rest of your fuel system. Why would you want to do this? Uh, makes it pretty easy if you want to take your tank off for shipping, uh, take your tank off to refill it even. Um, I also have a siphon tube setup that I use that works really good and that I got at EAA also. Um, but I really dig the way this works and how quick it snaps together. Never had a problem with it, so highly recommend it. Got it on eBay too, I'll put a link in the description. Also, we got these things right here, these two little fingers that hold the paramotor from rocking this way and this way. So it makes your cart nice and stable. That's all these are, is some conduit clamps. Very cheap, easy, and I wrapped them in electrical tape so it holds this down. And uh, by doing that, it makes a nice stable platform for working on, and I can move this thing all over the place, and uh, I don't have to worry about it blowing off in the wind. All right, another tip that I thought of early on is, uh, what do you do with your stuff sack after you take your glider out of it when you go flying? Now, most of the time you just leave it out in the airfield, but if you had an engine out and you wanted to pack up your glider and you had to walk somewhere, uh, or if you're doing a cross country, I like to stick it inside here. Obviously, this is my stuff sack. My stuff sack's got the glider in it, but this gives you a good idea. You have this pocket underneath your seat. You can stuff it in here, zip this baby up. Now it adds a little padding underneath too, and um, it allows you to carry that stuff sack right along with you. Super easy. Now here's a perfect example of when uh, function meets fashion. So a lot of times you're going out and uh, you're going to be flying around, you want that extra pocket, or even if you're just going out to the club, you're hanging out with buddies, you know, you want that extra pocket. Sometimes you got too much stuff going on. So uh, here I got this uh, retro fluorescent 80s style fanny pack, fag bag, waist pocket, here you go. So this is good, left or right, wherever you're going to be going. Not only do you look good, look cool and stylish, but you got all the room you need to take with the stuff you need. So that's just a little Mark personal tip. Paramotor related? Not really. All right, next little trick is uh, when you get out to the airfield, if you fly at the same place all the time, it's nice just to leave a windsock out there. But for me, I go to new places and launch in a new area. So how do you bring a windsock with you that works good, easy to transport, and um, you know works perfect? A lot of people use those cane poles for fishing, which work great, but I found this. This is an old golf ball retriever that I got at a rummage sale, and uh, it goes out to, uh, I don't know, at least 10 feet here, and the pole goes right into the end of it. On this end, I just took a uh, old metal snake so I can stick it right into the ground, and bada bing. got yourself a windsock. When you're done, collapses back in. Super easy to use. Wrap it back up. Uh, but that's just a nice little tip. You always want to know where that wind is. And like they say, it doesn't matter how much runway you have behind you. It's all about how much room you have in front of you. So give yourself ample room. I've seen enough crashes and carnage at EAA and different fly-ins um, to know that it's usually related to uh, <clears throat> the selection of where people set up to take off. If you put enough room in front of you, you got room to taxi and you got room to take off. But the moment that you get yourself too close to 
Man, I saw people hit helicopters at EAA twice. When you put yourself too close to those other obstacles, you get fixated on it. And um, why would you do it? You got all that room in front of you, unless you have a tight takeoff. Uh, give yourself plenty of room and know the wind direction. All right, next up is uh, is this thing. Now, what the heck is this thing? You like rest on it when you're tired? Oh, is it for washing the car? No, this was an idea that Mike Robinson had uh, and gave to me, and then I just kind of made my own thing. And I'll show you what it's for. Now, you can see your motor is always hanging off the back of your frame, just cantilevering. So during storage and even during transportation, I like to take this thing and um, put it underneath my motor here. And this just supports the motor from sagging off the back. You'd think in time, if you go on a long road trip, that's a lot of weight moving down. I even heard Mark Zinkel, uh, he uses a crutch, which is the perfect thing. You cut the crutch, put it right underneath there. But just the easy piece to put in here when you're storing it um, to keep the motor from sagging down and putting any stress on those uh, bolts that mount the motor to the frame. Here's the prop right there. And when you're done with it, you just throw it off to the side. So simple little support, nice thing to have. All right, moving right along here for the next tip. Uh, when I'm heading out to the field, uh, there's only a few things that I bring along. It's the paramotor, the paraglider, toolkit, helmet, uh, sometimes my flight suit, my radios, a radio chest pack, GoPro, mostly the other stuff other than the big things I can fit right into a little basket. So one of these nice little handy shopping baskets works out sweet. Everything stays in it. Um, it's easy. You can take it right out to the field if you have to walk a little ways with it. So, you know, if you've got a bin system or a bag, I think this kind of beats both of them. Easy access. You use them every day in the store. They're easy to use. Um, so something that you can carry your gear along. So just keep an eye out on Amazon or wherever these are available. And uh, grab yourself one of these. Holds your gear real nicely. Cruising right along. Another tip here. This is the uh, Maxima Racing Formula K2 Racing Oil. This is what's recommended to use in the Black Hawk. I know there's a lot of different oils out there, but in general, this oil was supposed to be like, it was like 21 bucks a liter at the local motorsports place. Uh, and that gets kind of pricey. I know it lasts a long time, but uh, I went in with my brother. We went on Amazon. I found out the best deal. And from like 20 bucks, I got this down to cheap. I want to say like 13 or 14 bucks for each one of these. So if you can buy in bulk and stock up on this stuff, <clears throat> good stuff to have. Basically, you can use it in all your two cycle. Uh, smells awesome when it's burning, and this is what's recommended. So get yourself a good deal, buy in bulk, and you're going to be set for a long time. Next tip. <clears throat> now, I got this on Amazon also. It says 13 bucks. I probably paid somewhere around there. It's the standard pilot log. And, um, and this came as a recommendation to my, from my helicopter buddy, who's a helicopter pilot. He said, you know, it'd be just a good idea to keep track of all your flights, put a little details about them. Uh, and honestly, I, I kind of do more of my video track or my tracking through making videos so I can look back at it. But it's good just to write down hours, something significant, conditions for flying, anything that you notice so you can go back and keep a, a record of it. Um, but also, <clears throat> you know, the more you fly, that just shows that you have more hours. So you could really put it in any notebook, but I like this official little pilot's log. So that's kind of a cool thing to have. Every time I get done with a flight, just quick fill out the details of it. Um, and hopefully one day I got this book all filled up. Uh, I can get into another one, but yeah, very cool, nice tool to have. Uh, so this is called the standard pilot's log. Get it on Amazon, fill it up. All right, last but not least, one of the funnest things about flying is sharing your flights with other people. So you're always trying to figure out where can I mount a GoPro. GoPro on the helmet always looks cool. GoPro on the foot looks great. This was a uh, Christmas gift that I got and I really dig. This is the uh, specked out rare earth magnetic mount for going right up into your wing. I've seen people make their own too, but this allows you to put it right inside the wing and point down, gives you some really unique footage. Uh, so that's pretty sweet to have, just a little different way. I mean, we got drones and Osmos and DSLRs and GoPros and everything, so filming it, uh, there's a lot of different options. This is the only way that you can put that camera directly up into your wing and get that look down feeling. So those are as many of the things as I can think of today. Hopefully we get some good wind, good non-windy days sometime soon so I can get back into the sky. Uh, once again, like and subscribe to videos. I'll definitely be uh, making more of them as I get out and fly more this summer. If you're in Wisconsin or you're ever heading this way and you want to go flying together, hit me up, send a message, comment below with some of your favorite modifications for paramotoring also. And as always, it's a great sport. It's fun to meet the people out there. Have fun doing it. Stay safe out there and look forward to seeing you in the sky. 
Bye, guys.